Hey, so today we're going to be looking at solving uh, bar forces in a truss by the method of joints. So you might be given a problem, something that looks like this on the left, where you're given a truss that maybe it's simply supported, and you're told that you need to solve for the member forces. So what that is is the tension or compression inside each of those members that this truss is holding. So in order to you know go this route, we have to we have to think a couple things. First, we have to understand that this is a, a what we will call uh, a truss, right? So for a truss, what we're assuming is that all the joints are pin connected. Right, so maybe you know what that means, maybe you don't, but all the joints are pin connected, meaning they are not able to transmit any like rotational restraint. So these things can just you know move. Um, there's no moment of restraint, but there is an X and a Y force restraint. So the pins or joints are pin connected. We gotta think about that. The other thing that we're gonna say is the the members are because of that. Um, the members are two force members. And in addition, what we really need to say is the joints are pin connected and the loads are at each joint. Right, so, or, or, or maybe I should say are only at joints. Um, right, so are only at joints here. So what that does is it, it creates two force members. So in other words, um, what we have is we have members where we have, you know, a member and there's only one force on each side and in order for this thing to be in equilibrium what we know is that the force in this member has to be lined up exactly with the axis of the member so what that means is we can use vector components to figure out you know we can come in here and say well okay if, if the force is lined up right with that member we can look at the vector components of this thing based on you know some angle of this member and, and based on that we can do a lot of different things okay um, in addition um, we know the joints are pin connected we know the members are two force members and um, we're going to typically assume tension. So what that means is we're going to assume that this member is being pulled on. So we're going to say, you know, a lot of times I'll write a little box like this that says tension is positive. So if we get tension, meaning the arrows are kind of pulling away from the joint or the member, then we're going to get a positive value. If we get a negative value, then we'll know, hey, it's in compression. But that's where we're going to go and how I'm going to solve it. To, 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 to solve the problem, right, we'll have a, a solution process here, right, that basically has three, three different steps. Okay, so whenever you get a problem like this, you first want to, like with most statics problems, draw your free body diagram, okay? So... Uh, I can't stress enough how important drawing a good free body diagram is. It really helps you with with getting the overall reactions and that sort of thing. And and that goes to kind of point two or step two here is we have to solve for reactions. And sometimes this isn't needed, but oftentimes it is. So solve for reactions. Okay. So what that means is if we have a simple supported A in this case and it's in a, a you know simple supported truss. We have a pin supported A, a roller supported B. We need to be able to solve for the reactions and know what they are and solve for them. So that's step two. And step three is we start to break the truss apart at each joint and solve for each joint. So solve for forces at each joint. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to outline that and you know take I don't know maybe um, the first little bit here and I'm just going to do one and two. Then we'll break this into a second video, and we'll you know go to the step three. So if you're really really comfortable with drawing free body diagrams, if you're really really comfortable with solving for reactions, you know maybe you can just skip to the next video. But for now, um, for those of you that maybe aren't or this is something new to you, I, I want to you know just jump in there. And, and go into um, drawing the free body diagram and solving for reactions. Okay, so um, with all good free body diagrams, we need to start with a picture of, of the, of the uh, structure, right? And basically what we're going to start doing is we're going to start by essentially just drawing that out, right? So we have our structure here. And I'm just going to, you know, dot these, these nodes in. Um, I'm going to, you know, draw a line in between right so this doesn't look much different than what we started with okay the the difference is um, right I have my known forces here of 12 kips one of the differences here is I don't know 
what the support reactions are. So I'm going to take these support symbols off, and instead I'm going to put some support reactions. So at a roller, at roller B, we're going to have one force, which is going to be BY. That's what we're going to call it. And, and at the pin A, we're going to have two forces. So I'm just going to step back for a second and think, well, okay, if this 12 kips is pulling to the right, I'm probably going to have AX pulling to the left. Okay. And again, if this 12 kips is causing rotation about BY, that's going to be clockwise. Well, AY probably has to go in the other direction. So I'm just going to make a guess there. Hopefully it's a good guess. And if it's not, we'll figure it out. But, you know, that's a good start. Um, with a good free body diagram, you should typically include dimensions. So I'll add those in here. Okay, so five feet and three feet. And then also I like to show my positive sign coordinate system, also my positive rotation coordinate system when I sum forces in some moments. So pretty complete moment diagram. The one thing that we should probably add in here is the, the node names and, oops, that's not B, sorry about that. Um, so here's C and here's B. Okay, so we have a pretty good free body diagram, but the thing that it does, and hopefully you see this, is it highlights, you know, it, again, these different forces are the forces that we need to solve for. Okay, so these are the unknown forces. We, we labeled them with variables, and um, so now what we need to do next is to go and solve for those. Oops. Okay, so you know, draw a free body diagram, check, we did that. Let's go to solving for reactions. Okay, so typically the way that we're gonna solve for reactions is we're gonna use uh, our equations of equilibrium. So if you've been taught this, typically what I'll do is I'll write some of the force in the x direction equals zero, uh, some of the forces in the y direction equals zero, and some of the moments equals zero. Okay, so each of these, we're gonna look at the free body diagram, we're gonna solve each of them, and, and for the moments it gets a little trickier because we have to pick a point to take moments about, because moments are a force times a distance, and we have to pick what point that's gonna be. So to first, you know, solve for this, one of the things that I like to do is I like to put in and my positive sign convention here as well, just so you know I don't forget. You know, it's really clear, and maybe it'll help you as well. So all I do here is I say, okay, well, these are my sum of the forces. What forces do I have in the x direction? So if I look up here, right, I can just say, well, okay, I know my ax is in the x direction. I know my 12 kips in the, is, is, in, is in the x direction, and that's it. Okay, so there aren't others, um, and that's that's what I'll do here. So I'll take this and I'll write my equation now. And I'll say, okay, well, I have AX and I have 12 kips. The AX is going to the left, so I'm going to call that opposite of my positive sign convention. That's going to be negative. 12 kips is going to the right. That's, that's inconsistent with my positive sign convention. That'll be positive. It has to equal zero. So the good thing is this math is pretty basic. Um, most of you, I'm sure, can do this without the use of a calculator. But you add AX to both sides, and you get AX equals 12 kips, okay? Pretty basic, pretty easy, hopefully, you know, good warm up. Okay, so we got there's some of the forces in the x direction. Now let's go to some of the forces in the y direction. Okay, some of the forces in the y direction. Again, we can come here and we can say, well, what are our forces in the y direction? We have AY, we have BY, and that's it, right? So that's kind of nice, right? We can take AY, we can take BY, and Again, we can write those down, A, Y, B, Y, this has to equal zero, but let's see for a second. Well, A, Y is going down, that's opposite of our sign, positive sign convention. B, Y is going up, that's positive. So we just get the, the statement A, Y equals B, Y, which is nice, but we haven't solved for A, Y or B, Y yet. We just know that they're equal to each other. Makes, makes some sense, right? If, if we have only one horizontal force here, the two vertical forces have to be equal to each other. Okay, so the next step is really to figure out, well, okay, we need to figure out one of these vertical forces, and to do that, we're gonna have to use another uh, equation. In this case, we're gonna use sum of moments. So I, whenever I take sum of moments, I like to look for taking a place where the most unknown forces I have pass through that point. So in this case, if we look at AX and AY, those two unknown forces both pass through this point A. So that's a great place to start with taking moments because the unknown forces, when they pass through that point, 
have no distance for a moment arm. So the moment, remember, is a force times the distance. And at this point, right, the AX and the AY both pass through point A, so there's no moment caused at point A by AX or AY. So what does cause a moment by AX or AY? Well, or by point A? The, the other forces that are not passing through that point. The, the line of action of those forces is not through the point. So in this case, we'll have the 12 kips and the BY. So let's write those down. To, you know, we'll just write down 12 kips or down BY. But remember, a moment equals a force times the distance. So when we're solving the sum of moments equation, we have our forces here, but we also need to find our distances. So I'm just gonna put a little dot here. What distance do we have? Well, the moment arm between point A and this 12 kips is going to be, okay, it's gonna be basically this three, feet, this three feet. And the reason we can look at that is we say, well, okay, what's the line of action of this force? The line of action of this force is, I'm just gonna sketch it in here. It's this yellow line. This, this 12 kips is going to act along that yellow line. And what's the shortest distance, the way I think of it is with this distance here, what's the shortest distance between the line of action and the point? In this case, it's always gonna be the perpendicular, well, it's always gonna be the perpendicular distance. So this is the perpendicular distance between the line of action and the force, right? So this is our line of action and the point. So the distance between the line of action of the force and the point. So what we end up with is we're gonna go with you know 12 kips times three feet. And then we have to look and see well what type of or what um, what direction of rotation will this cause? Right? So if we look at the 12 kips and in, in respect to, with respect to point A, this is going to tend to cause rotation that goes in this direction, if you can see that, okay? So it's gonna cause rotation that goes in a clockwise direction that's opposite of our positive sign convention. So we're gonna say that one's negative. Likewise, we need to take a look at, um, or, uh, take a look at BY, okay? So if we take a look at BY, I'm sorry, that's negative. So if we take a look at BY, let's take a look at BY. What's the what's the um, line of action of BY? Well, BY, the line of action, right, is is here for BY, right? That's our line of action. So this is our line of action, or line of application, however you want to put it. Maybe your your teacher says something different. So. What's the, again, what's the shortest distance between that line of action and, and point A? Well, we can see it's the perpendicular distance. It's just this horizontal distance between the two, which is going to be uh, 9 feet. Okay, so BY times 9 feet equals 0. And again, we, gotta, we have to look and say, well, is that positive or negative? Okay, well, BY is going to tend to cause rotation that goes like this about point A. Okay, so with that around point A, and that matches our positive sign convention here. Okay, and we'll say that's gonna be a positive, uh, positive value. So I'm just gonna put positive in here, and this equals zero. Well, when we do the math out, we get by times nine feet equals zero. Okay, or I'm sorry, it doesn't equal zero, it equals, we have to add 12 times three to the other side. 12 times three is 36, so we get 36 kip feet. Okay, B, so if we divide both sides by nine, we get by equals well, the good thing is our units work out here, and the feet go away, and we get four kips, which is nice. Again, we get an answer, so we have this answer, and what we can do is we can take this now and plug it in and get uh, another answer. So in other words, what we'll get is AY also equals four kips. Okay, so now we can look back, we can say, great, we have our reactions, and we are all set with the reactions to move on to part three, right? So if we look back up here, we drew our free body diagram, we solve for reactions, and now what we need to do is solve for the forces at each joint. So I'm gonna stop the video here, um, and we'll pick up in part two.